Hey everyone, Casey Scanlon here, bringing you another Lake of the Ozarks fishing report. We're getting towards the end of April and the fish are really trying to spawn. Water temperature is in the 50s, you know, mid to upper 50s in most uh, regions of the lake. The water clarity is pretty clear and we've got the biggest uh, tournament of the weekend, actually the biggest tournament of the year, coming up this weekend. It's the Big Bass Bash. Um, there's going to be a ton of boats on the water and they should be hitting it right. You know, the fishing's good. It's springtime. These fish really want to spawn, but, uh, we've, we had a little bit of a cold front last night and that's going to back a few fish off. There's few on beds, but they don't want to get up there everywhere. It's, it's weird. There's certain areas of the lake where the fish are really wanting to push up on beds. And then there's others where you go and look at the bank and there's there's not a whole lot up there. As far as the bed fish goes, um, there's some bigger males, some four or five pound males that are up there kind of cruising. Some of them set up on some beds, but you know, the, the bedding activity isn't super great right now. There's a lot of them pre-spawn. There's a lot of them probably bedding out deeper and uh, you know, probably even a few post-spawn fish, but there's a lot going on right now. This is one of my favorite times of the year to fish. It doesn't matter what fishery you're on. You can really kind of open up your tackle box, throw a lot of stuff. There's a lot going on. So um, we'll just start with uh, some of the things that I would do to catch fish this weekend in the big bass bash. I mean, somebody's going to win $100,000 this weekend for the biggest fish. So the lake's going to be crowded. It's going to be hard to find a, a good fishing spot. And... Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it can be one on a variety of baits, anything from a finesse bait to something big like this, this glide bait. So, um, really, you know, it, it's kind of gotta, you gotta change with the weather and you gotta think about the spawn. That's, that's really where they're headed. These fish want to get back in the creeks. They want to get back in the coves. Um, but not all of them are there yet. So you kind of got to backtrack and, and, try to look at their path in there and intercept them somewhere along the line, whether that's a boat dock, whether that's a point that they're stopping on, um, maybe a channel bank, maybe a piece of wood or a brush pile. All of that's going to be in, in play this weekend, and you're going to see a lot of fish caught throughout the lake. So as far as areas of the lake, obviously it's clear water down towards the dam. There's some fish spawning down there. There's fish doing everything down there, but a lot of, a lot of little ones up on the bank. A uh, lot of big fish get caught up there all the time in those big bass bashes. So I imagine this year will be no different. There'll be some fish caught out deep. Um, you know, we've got sunny conditions, not a lot of wind, kind of bluebird this weekend. So, you know, I'm going to be looking at jig bite, uh, boat docks, fishing it around, cover like brush piles, lay down, something that those fish can get underneath in those clear conditions and kind of seek refuge. So they're going to be around some cover. Um, you know, the Trophy Bass Company Pro Jig, anywhere from, you know, three-eighths ounce to even three-quarter, just depending on how deep they are. But I'm going to do three-eighths ounce, half ounce this time of year, put a craw trailer on there, something without a ton of action. It's still kind of cold. So um, whether that's just like a little uh, speed craw looking deal like that, or, you know, a beaver, um, twin tail, even a chunk, uh, black and blue, green pumpkin, brown. Those are the colors I'm going to throw. It doesn't matter what area of the lake I'm in. You know, if it's a little bit uh, darker stained water, I'll throw a black and blue. And uh, if it's stained water or, you know, gin clear, I'll, I'll probably throw a brown. So uh, not don't get real complicated on the colors. Same way with your soft plastics, green pumpkin, Maybe some black and blue, watermelon red, you know, whatever you have confidence in. But you could throw a, you know, shaky head, um, you know, brush hogs, creature baits, things like that. But the shaky head, at least on the guide trips we were doing this week, has been getting a workout. Uh, you can catch them. You can catch fish that are spawning. You can catch fish that are out deeper. Um, you can be pretty efficient with that. And it picks up a little less moss. There's some moss and stuff growing on some of the banks which uh, fouls up your lure. I'm actually picking it off my shaky head right now. I've used and abused this one, straightened out the, uh, the wire on it, but uh, man, caught a ton of fish. Bent the hook out, they've been biting it. And basically I've been trailing it with uh, a, 
I don't have one handy here, but a Bass Pro Shop Sticko, five inch. Um, the Sticko is just a really good bait. Here, I got one on this wacky rig. Um, it's probably, I mean, I've thrown a lot of Senko style baits. There's a lot of guys that love the Yamamoto's, a lot of guys that love different brands. But as far as durability, the sink rate, and fish catching, I don't think you can beat the Bass Pro Shop Sticko. Uh, it falls great. You don't need to add a nail in it most of the time. They have a ton of great colors. It's cheap. You can get it in 30 packs, uh, even 100 packs probably. And um, it just straight catches fish. Uh, I carry it in green pumpkin, black with blue tail, and June bug, and that's about it. I've got a few watermelon reds, but I carry them by the hundred, and we use them constantly. I mean, we, we go through these worms a lot. Uh, wacky rig, another super deadly technique right now. You can skip that bait. Uh, it's easy to fish. The wacky rig, you're just gonna let it fall. You know, you're gonna throw it up next to a spot that you think that a bass is gonna be, and you're gonna let it fall, you're gonna shake it a little bit, and you're gonna move it, let it fall, and then reel that thing in. I'm not sitting there making a three minute long cast with it. I'm throwing it to where I think a bass is, letting it fall in their face, and if he doesn't eat it, then I'm gonna pick it up and throw it to another place where I think a bass is living. So it's great for skipping behind boat docks. Green pumpkin's gonna get the job done for you all weekend, but um, just their little finesse worms <clears throat> are gonna be great this weekend. Fish are spawning, they like that finesse stuff. Uh, you could even throw a floating worm around a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of spawning, pre-spawn fish that are willing to chase that kind of stuff down. So, a lot of things going on, but you know, if you wanted to keep it simple, you could use those three rods, a jig, a shaky head, and that wacky rig, and be around fish, catch fish all weekend, and if you put it in front of a big one, he's gonna eat one of those baits. So. Um, you know, that's what we've been doing a lot on our guide trips. Um, you know, the top water bite, I saw some fish chasing shad, some fish schooling the other day. That top water bite's gonna be strong, whether it's a walking bait. Um, a pop R is really, really good this time of year during, um, <clears throat> during the spawn, it's just slower. You can pop that bait and let it sit over their beds, um, and they just seem to like it. it. It's easier to throw. That The bait that I just showed you, this is a, um, a Vixen. You can walk the, the dog with that. It's a great sounding bait. But basically, you know, you're twitching your rod tip and that bait is working back and forth on the surface. And that can be hard for, you know, a beginning level angler or someone that hasn't thrown that bait very often. It can be hard to achieve that, the perfect action. Whereas like a pop R, is something you can throw out there, throw it and chug it along. It doesn't sink. It doesn't want to, you know, get away from you. It's just, it's an easy bait to throw. We throw it a ton on our guide trips, whether the fish are schooling or whether they're on the bank like they are right now. It's just a really good option and it's easy to fish. So, um, big baits, big bass. So it's the big bass bass. You're going to see a lot of guys throwing big swim baits. And, uh, you know, that's, that's one right there. I've been throwing around a little bit. Uh, haven't had a whole lot of success, but this is the time of year where they typically eat a swim bait, whether it's a soft bodied, like hollow belly swim bait, uh, maybe like a mag draft style bait. Um, you know, Bass Pro Shops uh, makes one called the Comeback Shad that's very similar to that mag draft style bait. It's like the original. It's probably what the mag draft was copied off of, but Steve Kennedy made it famous by catching a ton of fish on it big ones winning elite series tournaments on it and uh that comeback shad's really great it's a great profile and um it looks like the gizzard shad that these fish are eating they're inexpensive you can get them at bass pro shops so grab some before you come up here you can skip it under boat docks reel it past laydowns, and it gets really big bites and that's the same with this you're going to throw it on points structure spots around cover and you're going to try to draw that big bite out of the cover you know you're going to throw it next to a boat dock or a lay down and you're going to work that bait past there and you're trying to draw the biggest fish that lives in that area out of there and a lot of times you will a lot of times they'll come out there and look at that bait and uh, try to eat it um, sometimes they won't eat it but you'll at least know they're there and maybe you can come back and catch them later or maybe you could catch them on a different bait, but this is the big bass bash this weekend. And guys, 100 grand sounds pretty good. And a big bait oftentimes will produce a big bite. Um, 
one of the other baits I'm going to throw this weekend is the Ozark Flash spinner bait. This is a three quarter ounce. Um, water's kind of clear in some areas. It's stained in uh, like upper gravoy. Uh, I imagine the Nianguas haven't been in there this week, but um, you know the upper Osage is going to have some some color in it. And a lot of these fish have not spawned yet. And as far as baits that get big bites, this one right here, this time, especially this time of year, if you reel this past a lay down, a shallow dock, a point where that big fish is staging, they're going to eat that thing. And, and they'll also eat this off of beds. It's a very durable spinner bait. It's not going to break in half when you set the hook on that big one and are reeling them to the boat. And the good thing is about it is you can probably pick up a couple of them, catch a ton of fish on them, and you're not going to go through many spinner baits all weekend. You could catch 50 keepers on that spinner bait and be good to go. You're still going to be able to throw it out there with confidence that when one bites it, you're going to land them. A lot of a lot of spinner baits break right in through here or right at the head. And what you're left with is a fish swimming around with that hook in your mouth and all you've got is a wire attached to your line most of the time. So I uh, had that problem with a lot of spinner baits. This bait is designed not to do that. We've got a great wire in there. And we've done a few other things with the bait to make it not break. So um, awesome bait. It's gonna catch some big ones this weekend. Uh, Fitz Fishing is all stocked up with those. You can get them at Bass Pro Shops. Um, but I'm going to go three quarter ounce on that. Probably a um, little deeper water. Maybe if the wind's blowing, especially down here towards the lower end of the lake. And then if I'm heading up the rivers and creek arms, I'm probably going to switch it up to more like a half ounce. And I'm going to reel that thing around as many lay downs, backside of boat docks, shallow cover as I can. So, um, whether the fish is spawning or whether he's staging, you know, this bait right here, even a chatter bait uh, reeled past him, a lot of times will draw that strike. And you're going to catch some of the bigger fish that live in the lake. It's just been proven. I've proven it to myself over time. Um, spinner bait gets big bites. So if you can gain some con confidence in it and throw it, you're going to catch them. So uh, great bait. Um, those baits right there, I'm looking behind me, my boat's kind of a mess. I was at Grand Lake fishing the Toyota series last weekend. I actually threw this spinner bait the entire time and absolutely crushed them. We finished, I uh, got a top 10 in that. I think I tied for eighth. Um, but the fishing here at the Ozarks is fixing to explode. Every one of them's uh, thinking about getting up there, getting on beds, but we got schooling activity. You've got fish around the bank and you've got a lot of fish staging. So that's gonna help spread the field out, whether you wanna fish on the main lake or whether you wanna to run to the back of a creek and get in a pocket and look for sight fish. You can do both right now. Uh, don't, don't sleep on your jerk baits, uh, your Alabama rigs, stuff like that. They're still gonna catch them. Um, I'd say throw that minnow bait that everybody's throwing, but I've caught a, quite a few fish on it. I don't throw it much, but when I have thrown it, I've caught fish, but never never a big one. So um, I've seen guys do it. I know you all have seen guys do it on TV, but on this lake, they don't really like that minnow that much. Um, the big ones want a big meal and uh, that's what I would be throwing this weekend. So, you know, it's going to be hard to pick out an ideal fishing location at times because there's going to be guys everywhere. But shallow boat docks in coves are going to be a primary target, whether the fish are spawning or they're staging, they're gonna be using a lot of those shallow coves, whether they're you know, steeper or flat, really doesn't matter. You know, Some coves are gonna have a bunch of fish, some coves are gonna have less fish. So uh, focus on those po spawning pockets where fish are trying to spawn. Focus on the points leading up to these spawning pockets. Um, you know, A lot of these fish will just pull into the closest point and they'll stage up. So look at some of those points fish a little deeper on the points, you know, with your dragging a shaky head, dragging a, a jig, fishing the jerk bait, uh, spinner bait, stuff like that. So try to intercept those fish before they get there. And then there's gonna be a lot of fish on, on channel banks, um, you know, main lake bluff ends, bluff banks, main lake points, you know, inside just the banks kind of just on the inside of these creeks, there's gonna be a lot of fish 
pulling in still. You know, we've got a huge fish population at Lake of the Ozarks and not all these fish can spawn at once. So they kind of come in little waves. There's a little wave that moved up, you know, uh, a week or so ago and they're up on the bank and whether or not a new wave is going to kind of pull up, I don't know. Probably not with this weather, but we've got a good moon phase right now. So, so you may see it. You, uh, I've been fooled plenty of times before out here on the water, but you're, you know, all the way through May, you're going to have little, you know, little phases of, of fish, uh, waves moving up and, and spawning in different areas of the lake. So, um, you know, we were down there mid lake and I didn't see nearly the spawning activity that could change tomorrow. You know, though, all those fish could move up overnight and there'll be beds everywhere. So keep your eyes peeled, get a good pair of col uh, polarized glasses for this weekend. Those Costa Del Mar sunglasses are the absolute best. You cannot beat them as far as uh, being clear, being able to see down in that water. They help me tremendously while I'm out here fishing, whether it's finding cover or finding the bass, but you need a pair for this weekend. Uh, you want heavy line, you know, you want to use braided line. Um, you want to use as heavy a line as you can get away with, you know, like skipping that uh, wacky rig under docks. You know, I want to use like a 12 or 15 pound leader. Um, you know, if I'm fishing behind cables you know, or fishing really anything on the bottom, I want to use 20 to 25 pound line. Uh, when you get that big bite, you want to get him in the boat. You don't want to tell a fish story for the rest of your life about how you almost won a hundred grand. Uh, so go to Bass Pro Shops. Get uh, the Bass Pro Shops 100% fluorocarbon or their new braided line, which I absolutely love. It's amazing. Uh, got it on my spinning poles, uh, all my topwater stuff. Check out their new braid. It's great, um, inexpensive, and really good. Uh, but good luck to you guys this weekend. Good weekend to be on the water. Weather's going to be pretty decent. The fish are biting, and man, it's a big derby, and somebody's going to walk away with a lot of money, so it should be fun to watch. So good luck to all you guys participating. Good luck to everybody out there on the water that's fishing. And we'll catch you guys on the next report.